Hey, what's going on, Candelis? It is Dan Thomas with 8Z Real Estate and the latest episode of Spotlight on Candelis. In this episode, I interview Christina with Miganzo Photo. In the episode, we discuss how a pinhole camera project in middle school led to her fascination with photography, why she decided to focus on capturing the milestones in the first year of childhood, and what she does to pay it forward with new and upcoming photographers. Take a look. So welcome, Christina. Thank you for joining me. Good morning. Yeah, so McGonzo Photo, uh, you know, most of these businesses that I interview, you know, we kind of start with the the genesis of, of the business, but you know, when somebody's more in the, the field of arts, I find it a little more fascinating, you know, to, to go back a little further. So, you know, arts and, and photography and everything is, you know, a family affair and, and it was in your household growing up, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah my dad was an artist. Um, he did a lot of like art in school, high school. He was going to go to college for it, but some life changes happened um but yeah he did a lot of greeting cards things like that and it's just always been part of my life i grew up in loveland colorado which is as a lot of people know very art hub central in colorado as well and so there's just art from the very beginning in my life yeah so art you know throughout your your childhood you know your you know love and fascination with photography you know that kind of got started in junior high correct yeah that's correct um and I think you had mentioned that that you know there was um, an assignment or a project you guys had, and and that kind of just you know uh, really filled your fascination or started your fascin fascination with with photography. Yeah, in uh, middle school we had an art project where we built a pinhole camera. So basically, you take like a box, you have um, a very small hole in it. Your shutter is basically a piece of tape over the front of that hole and you put a piece of uh, photo paper in there. You go outside and you open that shutter up for 20-30 seconds and then you close it and go inside develop your paper and it was just magic for me to see that. It was just it struck me just the different ways the light played on the paper capturing that image in a very artistic way just really stuck with me. Yeah so so the hook was on from there and, and it kind of carried you know through the the rest of your education? Yeah, absolutely. Going in through high school, I stuck with photography classes, doing a lot of film, um, shooting a lot of black and white film, developing the film, developing my own prints. And then um, I went into college and got a Bachelor of Fine Arts. I specialized in children's book illustration, so more of the drawing side. But I continued that photography as well um, when I went to college too, and it just kind of stuck with me. Yeah. So I know you, you know, after college, you know, a lot of random jobs, uh, you know, as you know, somebody, um, or as people can imagine, you know, when you're in the arts, you kind of just, uh, you know, take the jobs and shoot what you what you can. Um, so how did it filter down uh, into more of the uh, infant photography? So after our son was born, I, I really kind of picked up my camera again, I ended up getting a digital camera instead of the old film. So learning kind of a a new technique with that and I just kind of refell in love with photography again. There's just a different dynamic to the digital, you know, you could take a million photos until you got the right one, but you know, I felt like there, there's just a lot more options with it and just capturing him as he grew. Um, I had several friends who did photography as well and I really just chatted with them about, you know, what they do, how they kind of got started and, um, you know, I really thought it was a great way to kind of merge into a potential career that would be great for our family as well, something more flexible that I could be home with the kids more um, and make my own hours. Yeah. So, you know, it started with, with shooting your son and, and capturing that, that first year, uh, you know, and then obviously the, the love of photography was, was refound. Um, you know, how did it evolve into the Gonzo photo? Well, um, I, like I said, started shooting with my son and honestly, I just kind of 
started photographing everything from weddings to seniors to chocolates, yeah. <laughs> pretty much everything. And, you know, you leave a, a session and certain things fill your cup, certain things don't as much. And the more I shot, the more different types of sessions I felt, you know, I just kept getting pulled to more of the the babies and the children and the young families, that's what spoke to me. I mean, part of it was I was in that world right now and I knew how fleeting those moments were and just being able to capture those is what I really wanted to focus on. Um, you know, just seeing bonds of moms with their kids, dads with their kids, the whole family dynamic. You know, you don't get that for very long as a young family. And, you know, every time I come back from those, it was just so fulfilling. And I just wanted to continue to capture those moments for those families. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, being a, a, a new dad, um, or I guess a dad for a second time with, with, uh, you know, a son just over a year old, um, you know, I know how, uh, you know, lack of control, you know, you have. So, you know, what constitutes, you know, when you're, you know, when you're focusing on, you know, primarily that first year and, and capturing those, uh, you know, the simplicity and the, the fleeting moments of that first year, so what what constitutes a good shoot? You know, what's what's needed to really capture those moments? Well, instead of focusing on like, you know, a newborn and then having the kiddo come in every three months or so, I focus on the actual milestones of their ages. Okay. So, you know, newborns in that first couple of weeks, they're fresh, they're new, they're bendy, you know, they still feel like they're from the womb. Yeah. And then, you know, I do a lot of from birth to first years. And so I always recommend that the kiddos come in on milestones. So when they're pushing up from the floor and lifting their heads to when they really start to sit up completely on their own and crawl to, you know, walking around and having that first birthday party. Like I try and focus on those milestones and every kid's different. You know, some hit those milestones at two and a half months for, you know, pushing up, keeping their head up real strong, and others are four or five months, and it's just so cool to see the differences in kids, and so that's why I focus more on the actual milestones than just the ages of them. Okay. And is each family different? Are you typically just capturing one of those milestones? Are people or families continuously coming in throughout the different milestones? How does that typically play out? Um, you know, I have a variety of clients. Some love that they do the birth through first packages and they have, you know, the newborn and then the two milestones and then a first year session. Some just come in for a newborn and then a first year session. And then I kind of see them as their family grows. Um, you know, a lot come in for the falls and get their Christmas photos. They come in the studio for like the actual holiday setup. So it just depends on what model works for each family. You know, some want to capture every single moment and some just want that you know, I want my whole family pictures every year so I can update them, update, you know, extended family who are out of state or out of country. So as somebody who is a, um, you know, how, how do I say it kindly to myself, uh, a rigid uh, picture taker, uh, you know, just out of curiosity, is it easier capturing the, the babies or the, or I, excuse me, is it more challenging to capture the, the infants or, the uh, the dads and brothers and sisters that might be involved in the photos. More often than not, it's like the siblings and the parents, which you get kind of real. And, you know, as an adult, you are more self-conscious, I think, yeah. and trying to get yourself to relax a little bit. Um, I try and steer clear of the uh, quote unquote, you know, grandma poses where everyone's just standing in a line, staring at yeah. the camera and saying cheese. Um, I try more do interactive or prompt posing where it's more like, okay, everyone hold hands, walk together, you know, tell jokes, um, see if there's a booger in dad's nose, <laughs> you know, just relaxing things. That way you get more of an emotion and a movement yeah. from the family rather than just, okay, everyone look at me and smile because you're not going to get an 18 month old to look at you and smile. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's more exactly. of, you know, snuggle with them, give them a raspberry or, you know, throw them up in the air a little bit, have a little bit of fun and, you know, it's more about capturing their connection rather than just capturing them in a photo. Yeah, that's that's a great way of putting it. You know, you know, I think that once they do connect with the, the camera, you're really you know capturing what's what's going on versus yeah what they think's going on in their head when it's <laughs> just you know them standing yeah. still. Yeah, they forget about like trying to you know 
stand tall or, you know, have the perfect smile or anything. It's just, it's more natural. And, you know, I find that clients just kind of gravitate towards those moments rather than just a pretty picture of everyone smiling. Gotcha. So I, I'm curious, I know, you know, with real estate and my line of work, you know, there's a, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, they think the appointments and, and that sort of thing is, is you know, really the, the consumption of, of time. And, and a lot of times it's, it's more behind the, the scene stuff. Um, you know, is that some, are there parallels with with photography where people might think, you know, the hour or two that, that you're shooting them, you know, they might think that's it, but but in reality, it's a lot more behind the scenes, um, whether it's prep or editing, you know, uh, post shoot and that sort of thing. Absolutely, yeah, I've got several hours typically on the front end of sessions. So honestly, depending on the session, but you know, I try and design, work with my clients to design their sessions, especially newborn sessions where they have a certain feel that they want for it, certain colors, um, so there's anywhere from two to four hours of planning prior to the shoot um, on average shoots are an hour or two, depending on which type of session and, and then editing um, anywhere from four to eight hours, depending on the session as well. Um, it really just depends, but on average, I put in around 12 hours per client and I really want to make sure that, you know, they're getting the best product possible and I want to help them design their session and make sure it's going to be something they want to hang on their walls. So, you know, if somebody's interested, Christina, in capturing those first year milestones, you know, what's your recommendation on on when they get started in this process? Is it something where they you know wait till the the kiddo arrives, or is it something that should be done well in advance? It's typically something done well in advance. Usually, second, early, third trimester for newborns. Um, I only take so many newborns per month because babies come when they come. And I've had instances where I've had, you know, five, six in a month that were all born within 10 days of each other. And so to be able to make sure I can get every single one of my clients in, in a timely manner, I only take so many per month. So getting on the calendar earlier rather than later is great. Always try and have some wiggle room in case there's a last minute booking, but pre-planning is the best because, you know, even if that baby comes, three or four weeks early, yeah, I may or may not have time on the calendar for them. Well, great. Um, you know, one thing, that, you know, uh, and I appreciate all your time. One thing I wanted to you know, touch on before, you know, we wrap up here uh, you know, that I found was, you know, a, a, a great way of paying it for it is, is I know that, you know, you, whether it's intentional or unintentional, have really looked out as far as mentoring um, and supporting new photographers, you know, uh, you know, cutting their teeth in, in the industry. So um, can you share a little more with, with everybody on, on how that's kind of played out? Absolutely. Yeah, I have a studio located in downtown Loveland. It also operates as a co-op studio where I rent it out to other photographers. And majority of the photographers that use it are newer to the industry. A lot have only been in the industry a year, maybe two. Um, and I always offer to help them with studio lighting when they're new to it because it's a fully studio lit studio. There's no natural light in it whatsoever. Um, so their first booking, I always go in, show them exactly what to do, help with settings, help with lighting, help with angles, anything I can to help make their first session with their clients as comfortable as possible. So they have confidence with those clients. I've been in that situation before where you're like, I don't know what I'm doing and you kind of freeze and it, you know, it's hard to get back in the groove with those clients. Um, so I try and make those rentals as easy as possible for them. And a lot of them, of the uh, photographers that are in the studio, you know, they're there several times a month and it's kind of become like a second home for them. And we all just kind of work together. If there's questions, I help them out. And, you know, a lot of times they talk to me about, hey, how do you price things? Hey, how long should this shoot last? Um, and I'm always an open book to help those uh, photographers out. I mean, I was there once and I had a great support system when I first started out and I kind of want to just sort of pass that along. Yeah. And you were mentioning to me, you know, a couple of days ago that that's really not the norm in your industry, you know, that, that if there is a veteran photographer, so to speak, that, that will mentor, it's usually at a cost. And, you know, this is something that, you know, you're just relating back to me. You know, you started, you know, six, seven years ago and, and 
know, how to learn the tricks of the trade and just really want to, again, pay it forward. And, you know, I, I guess, you know, the, the better, you know, practitioners and professionals you have in, in your industry, the better overall your industry is. Yep, absolutely. I, I would love for everyone to be up on the same level and making profitable margins and not working themselves crazy, just trying to make a living, you know, being able to profit from their shoots and being confident in those shoots so they can get to that next level. Yeah. Okay. So if, if people, um, you know, would like to get started, you know, I know that in our Candelas neighborhood, it's a, you know, it's a growing neighborhood in households and also family size. Uh, yeah. So if, uh, you know, if our neighbors wanted to uh, get started with you, how would they uh, get started in the process? Uh, just contact me through my website, and there's a little tab on there that basically says contact. They fill out a quick form, kind of tell me what type of session they're looking for, their budget, and I kind of go from there. We figure out timelines and outfits and schedules and, you know, what they're looking. If they're looking to just get digitals or some wall art or an album, and I really try and work on customizing each individual experience for what the client needs. Great. Well, I, end, I tend to end uh, every interview with, with uh, you know, a question more on the, the fun and whimsical side, you know, it's, <laughs> you know uh, and it's just became a curiosity of mine, you know, doing all these, these interviews, you know, is, you know, what is, what is the one thing about your, your job or, or your career that people are, are always surprised or, you know, fascinated uh, to hear about? Um, a lot of times it's the scheduling of, I pencil you in, nothing's in ink <laughs> because babies come whenever, kids get sick, you know, kids bonk their heads on a desk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a lot of my schedules is very penciled in because things are on the fly, family life changes, kids do their own thing. And, you know, so I, I will always say, I will pencil you in and we'll go from there. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's very simple, but uh, very yeah. apropos based on on what yeah. you're capturing. <laughs> yeah. Yep, absolutely. So, well, perfect, Christina. Like I said, I've I've really enjoyed this this conversation and and getting to know you know your background and and uh, you know again, it's been really relatable. You know, having um, you know a son that's 15 months old. You know, you know the the role you you play and you know in capturing a moment in, in time. So. Um, I appreciate your time and I'll make sure that um, all your information is, is listed uh, below and, and make sure everybody to uh, reach out to Christina, you know, to, to capture that, those uh, first year milestones. Thank you so much, Dan. Okay. Well, there you have it. Another episode of Spotlight on Candelas. Again, I would like to thank Christina with McGonzo Photo. If you would like all her information or check out her work, you can go to her website at mcgonzophoto.com. And if you are a business owner in Candelas that would like to be featured on a future episode of Spotlight on Candelas, go ahead and email me at dan at 8z.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.